What up, fam? It's Aslan. Wanted to kind of clarify some stuff before the program for Wednesday starts. Corey and I went ahead and recorded on Tuesday afternoon-ish, evening-ish. Good show, but, you know, kind of boring. Uh, wasn't a lot to report on when it came to the head coaching hire. And then maybe 30 minutes after we got done wrapping up, news started percolating on War Chan, on Twitter, uh, various corners of the internet, that potentially this thing was done. Florida State had found their new head football coach, and it was going to be Bob Stoops. So we contacted our dude, Gene Williams, founder of Ministry of WarChant.com, the most dialed-in guy on the beat. And, um, you know, what he put out there is what we heard from him. And we're like, well, shoot, this sounds pretty encouraging. We should probably record a whole new show. So we did. We recorded a show that you're going to hear in the next probably 45 seconds or so after I'm done talking. And it's really happy. It's really uplifting. It's very upbeat. It's very positive. A lot of big dreams, uh, big talk. Uh, but then about 30 minutes after we got done wrapping that up, Another update came down the pike, and that one was not very encouraging. Uh, some of it may be discouraging, you could say. Uh, the deal potentially might have even fallen through, according to a source. So, as I leave you now, um, it's about midnight. It's almost Wednesday morning. But just to let you know, everything you're about to hear was recorded Tuesday evening uh, on the highest of highs, where it seemed like this thing was getting done. Uh, but as I leave you now, uh, it's still uncertain. Now, reading in between the lines, he could say no 10 million different ways. But he hasn't. He hasn't. Bob Soups could say nope, not at all. Not doing it. Absolutely not. 10 million different ways. I'm not going to say all of them because we'd be here for five days. But he hasn't. I remain upbeat. I remain optimistic it's going to get done. It's, it's gone on for too long for it to be this sort of quiet for it to uh, not come to fruition. But that said, I'm just some guy talking into a microphone. Gene knows best. Use a promo code FSU New Era, 50% off an annual membership to warchant.com. Whenever it happens, it's going to be posted there. Be there. Here's the show. Thank you. From Tally to Cali, it's time to wake up. Wake up, wake up. Warchant.com is your ultimate seminal sports source. And this is Wake Up Warchant, presented by Zaxby's. Now here's Warchant.com's ass on Hunch of Andy and Corey Clark. What about me? What's up, everybody? It is Wake Up War Chant presented by Zaxby's. I'm Aslan Hajavandi. He is Corey Clark. We both work for Warchant.com. Some of us contribute more than others. Uh, use the promo code FSU New Era for 50% off an annual membership to the ultimate seminal sports source. Uh, Corey, it's an exciting time uh, as we record this on Tuesday evening uh, for your listening pleasure on Wednesday morning. Uh, some smoke beginning to billow on the internet from perhaps less trusted corners of the web when it comes to seminal fandom than uh, war chant. Uh, but maybe this Bob Stoops thing, maybe there will be some closure, some finality, and uh, in a positive manner for the, uh, for the good guys here in Tallahassee in the coming day or so. Maybe, hopefully, sure, yeah, no, what do you think? I mean, I, wouldn't that be something to just, I mean, I'm, I'm sure they got all their I's dotted and their T's crossed. I said that right. I never say that right. I usually say I's crossed and T's dotted. Um, and they've, they've got the offers back and forth, and it's just a matter of my man deciding whether he wants to do it or not. And, uh, yeah, it'd be nice if he uh, decided to go ahead and do it. Bob, you only live once, buddy. That's... Anybody can go win at Oklahoma. Look at your uh, protege. He's out there steady winning 12 games a year. Come to Florida State and build something again, man. Just like pretend it's Oklahoma in 1999. Get it, get them back quickly. You can do it. You're big game Bob. That's not an ironic name. You're big game Bob. You coach in a lot of big games. Um, I don't know. Is it an ironic name when they called him big game Bob? Well, it's, yeah, I don't think he, once, once he got dubbed that, he no longer like won kind of the big game buddy he, no he listen they made a national title every three years it seemed like which i think is like yeah. this, it should be the standard of florida state i know people want 
Florida State to be Alabama or Clemson where it's playoffs every year, national title every other year. I would love it too. Um, I think you should strive for that, absolutely. But I think ultimately, uh, like every three years, you should be in the playoff. Like that should be the standard. And uh, Bob Stoops, I mean, this is me, like the cynicism just coming out of me. I, I thought this would be, he was like the only guy out there. I remember thinking like a year or so ago when, when this kind of started going sideways with Florida State not making a bowl game of like, who else is really out there? That was the whole thing. Like you get rid of Willie, who else are you going to get? That's like for sure awesome, going to make this thing work. And I'm like, you know, Bob Soups would probably, you know, but he's, he's retired. What are the odds that he would come to Florida State? He had so many ties with the University of Florida and never went there. Why would he come to Florida State? Um, and like, yeah, it just, there's, you cannot, this is like a can't miss. I hate you say like, there's no such thing as slam dunks. There's no such thing as home runs. Um, but dang, man, like outside again of, of Nick or Dabo, this guy, despite maybe the you know him being in the twilight of his career and being more of a delegator, at least knows how to build something really substantial and special and sustainable, right? Oh yeah, he's. The, I think he's the most sure thing of any like realistic candidates. Absolutely. Again, it's not a guarantee, hundred no. percent, but I think there is a guarantee that he would turn your uh, program into a functioning one, a functional one that even if he doesn't win a championship, we'll start winning games again, we'll have winning records, and be set up, I think, for the long haul for whoever the next head coach is, whenever that may be. Um, yeah, man, I, I think if you can get a Bob Stoops, and again, nothing official um, as we record this show, um, that's about as close to a home run as you can hit if you're Florida State. Just, I mean, just would be, uh, to me, almost perfect. Almost perfect. The guy did it for... He, he didn't get lucky with one or two recruiting classes at Oklahoma. He built that thing for the long term, uh, incredibly sustained success. And, um, you know, was able to recruit in other states. You know, I know Adrian Peterson. Didn't Adrian P any from Texas? Yes, Palestine. Was able Texas. to go in Texas and get the number one player in the country. Um, went all over the country to get players. Um, just built a really appealing, uh, really good program. And people don't remember, or I, I shouldn't say that, some people don't remember, um, Oklahoma was awful throughout the 90s. It yep. was awful. Like they had John Blake, they had you know Schnellenberger, and just all these coaches that just weren't very good at all, and they, they, be, they had become an afterthought. They had almost, I think, kind of like a whole decade like Florida State just had uh, of just three years. Like, that was their whole decade, like seven wins, five wins, seven. They just weren't relevant at all. And in two years, he turned them into a top five program for the next 20 years. So, yeah, man, I mean, he's not 37 anymore. We get it. But he certainly knows what a good college program looks like, how it's built, um, and how it functions. And he would be a, uh, a terrific hire if that, if that comes to be. But in the meantime, you got Odell Hagens. And that's pretty darn sweet, too. Indeed. I think it comes, you know, again, like I, I am all aboard the Bob Stoops hire. If it happens, I am totally on board, totally excited, ecstatic. But obviously, if you've been listening to the show for the last, you know, nearly two years, I, I do sometimes, you know, tend to look at the the, the, the empty part of the glass rather than the, the, the full part of it. Um, so and it's just it's my human nature. It's it's the love of the program. I never want to get too excited about things because then you get crushed when your expectations are set so high. But, you know, this sounds kind of weird, I, I guess. But when it comes to Bob Stoops, to me, at the core of it, to at least in terms of there's no way it can be a failure. Uh, it might not reach the heights that we all want, but for it to be like a failure to where this thing never, you know, gets beyond eight wins again or something like that. Like, to me, that's a failure. I, I don't see that happening at all because man, it's like the whole walks like a duck, talks like a duck, you know, sounds like a duck, it's a duck. You know, like Bob Stoops talks like a head coach acts like a head coach, has that hard-nosed mentality um, that Dedrick Dodge talked to us about. Maybe we'll run the interview with him. We ended up interviewing Dedrick Dodge on Tuesday afternoon to give you something to listen to because it seemed like it was going to be a slow day, but uh, momentum is starting to build behind Bob Stoops and a, and a potential deal. Our Gene Williams has posted an update on warchant.com. Use the promo code FSU New Era. To, Go read it. To Go it read out. it. Uh, what I will say, though, is that the word optimistic is, is in there. Um, and, you know, again, Gene's a guy that has based his whole career and, uh, you know, reputation on being right 
and uh, being accurate. So, uh, again, there's these things can fall through. But for the time being right now, again, as we record this on Tuesday evening, it, it, everything is, is starting to uh, trend in a very positive direction for Florida State in their pursuit of Bob Stoops. So that's um, – yeah, just well, and Gene, and Gene doesn't throw, uh, you know, feces up against the wall either. Um, when he writes something like that, that it's optimistic, that it's looking optimistic, believe it. Again, Gene also is a real journalist. Uh, some of these, I'm not talking about, I'm not disparaging other Florida State websites, but some other just websites in general. Um, maybe they don't have the same journalistic background that, that we do, and they don't really care if they're wrong or right. But also, they will write it as it's a done deal. Yep, this is happening. Absolutely. Gene's not doing that either. Like, he's not saying, absolutely, it's happening. Um, but he couches it. He qualifies it. But, yes, it is looking optimistic. Because it is. If it falls through, that that doesn't mean that um, G- Gene's not chasing clicks. Um, this this is, in the moment, where where it is for Florida State, and it looks positive. Okay, so but like you just said things change, right? It's it's yeah. always fluid in this stuff. Yeah. Um. Again, he's just uh, he's he's the ultimate sort of program manager, right? I mean, you talking about was, Gene? Well, obviously, duh. Okay. Um, yeah. Because, which it's kind of a pejorative, right? When you're talking about a quarterback, he's a game manager. You know, oh, that means he's not talented enough to to make plays right. or put a team on his back. Um. You know. You know, Bob Soups is probably out of the I'm going to be the defensive play caller. You know, I'm, I'm going to set the defensive game plan thing. But again, I think he's I hate saying culture because that was the word all around Willie Taggart and improving what was here before he got here and changing that and winning is, is all emblematic of your culture. Uh, but just like a, just a dude from Youngstown, man. Yeah, hey, man, you know, hey, that 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 spider Y two banana, man. Good day to play some football, man. Uh, like that's the kind of st- just the, the accountability. Again, these were things that Dedrick Dodge was talking about before we even really delved into the possibility that Bob Seuss was going to be here. But again, a guy that, that seems to embrace hard work and realize that this game, this sport is, is a tough, physical, demanding sport and you need to push guys to their limit. But then ultimately a guy who, you know, his last time around in Oklahoma, the last few years was a guy who saw problems on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, did the best to remedy those, but more so saw that they needed to get better offensively, went and hired a really good dude uh, named Lincoln Rally, who's got that thing rolling in, in Norman. Just, again, a guy who's been so dialed into the college sport at the absolute top pinnacle of the sport that his network, in terms of knowing the right coaches, the, the guys that he wants to bring his crew, quote, his boys, uh, I, I just can't imagine it not being top caliber. And then this thing kind of quickly turns around and not to get too far away from, you know, the present and the now, but like the last five years, Corey, I don't know if this is goes on in every conference, but like the last four years, there's always a team in the ACC that kind of comes out of nowhere and wins 10 games. Like 15, it was North Carolina. I think, Um, you know, 16 was Louisville. Obviously a lot of that was Lamar Jackson, 17 Miami kind of finally surges back and, and they made a new year six bowl with, with Rick there. Um, last season, I don't know who, who, who snuck up on people. Syracuse. Yeah, there you go. Syracuse was a team that did that. It, it, it feels like, and this is probably way too premature. You get a guy like Bob Stoops in place. And I know that they're going to lose a lot of important pieces, uh, you know, with guys like Marvin and, and Cam were expecting to leave. And we don't really know how elite the guys that Willie brought in were, but maybe this is a, you start hoping again. And the positive vibes start building around this program again. Maybe this is a team that could do something crazy like win 10 games if they've got a really good guy that knows what he's doing and has a really solid vision um, that's, you know, a tenable, proven winner. I'm, 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 I'm acting like it's done, Corey. You got you to tell me to calm down. I'm going to calm down. Yeah, I was going to say, calm down a little bit. It's not, it's not official. It's not done. But I would say this, uh, if you're a Florida State fan, which presumably you are, it'd be weird if you weren't and you were listening to this show, but we welcome all listeners. You, in fact, I feel like non-Florida State fans should listen to this show because it's really, really entertaining, and we're both incredibly intelligent on all matters, not just football. But if you're a Florida State fan in particular, no matter what happens, man, you should be excited that your school is doing this. You've been told for a decade now, you just don't have the money. Just don't have the money. Florida State can't spend with the big boys. It's a narrative that's been going on, even though, you know, I remember when Jimbo left in 17, you know, uh, a national writer was 
tweeting about how Florida State wouldn't spend the money he wanted on assistant coaches. They never gave him the money he wanted for coaches. And he they and they had the sixth highest paid assistant staff in the country when Jimbo left. Jim Florida State always gave money. And now, you know, again, you t- you were told about the facilities, you're told that you don't have any money, you can't compete with the big boys financially. And you're in talks, whether it happens or not, the fact that your university has been in talks with Bob Stoops for this long, knowing what kind of money that's going to mean, not just to him personally, but all the assistance that he wants, the way he wants to, I'm assume, re- reshape uh, the football staff with many more you know, analysts and recruiting advisors or uh, helpers or whatever you call them. Um, man, they're in, they're in it. Like he hadn't said no. And I think that should make all Florida State fans feel pretty good about um, their administration, how seriously they're taking this hire. They're not trying to skimp. They're not trying to get off on the cheap. They already paid somebody seventeen million, eighteen million dollars to go away, and now they're gonna they're in talks with somebody that's this big about the possibility of taking over the program. Man, squash that narrative forever. Then I get that there's stru- there there are financial realities with Florida State. But when it comes to spending, finding money to make this football program viable, well, they find ways. And they have obviously found a way because they're in talks with Bob Stoops. They went for the absolute home run hire. And I had somebody tell me on Tuesday about, man, it would be awful if they if they, if they, they spent two or three weeks trying to court Bob Stoops. And he said, no, they'd have some egg on their face. And I was like, yeah, but it'd be a really small egg because yeah. you know, it's Bob Stoops. It's not like Dave Doran turned you down. Right. Bob Stoops would have turned you down and you 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 were so serious with your financial offers that he really had to think about things. So to me, that should be a great sign for Florida State fans that it's just this far. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah, man. This isn't Mike Gundy. This isn't Tennessee swinging for Mike Gundy and Mike Gundy's or coming. Memphis or yeah. the guy at Memphis or somebody like that, man. This is Bob F. and Stoops there. If he became a head coach at Florida State, there would be what four or five active coaches in the country that had a national championship, he'd be one of them. Yeah. I mean, you went and got the best available candidate you could get from a from a name standpoint, right? Absolutely. Yeah, and the, and, and the other guys that are active that have rings right now are guys like Les Miles and Jimbo, and you take Bob Soups over those guys any day of the week. Yeah, I just said that. I would take Bob Soups over Jimbo Fisher. Uh, well, so, we all know your love for your affinity for Jimbo, but you're also a realist, and you saw what Bob Stoops did for 20 years yeah, at absolutely. one school. Jimbo, you know, about four, four, four and a half or five, um, and then he cut out. Bob Stoops built a program and stayed there for almost two decades, man. It's really, um, really impressive what he did at Oklahoma and the fact that he kept it in a spot where look at it, it's still a top 10 program without him. Like that thing's set up uh, for the long haul. He did a really good job there. And the ancillary benefits you talk about in terms of reputation and uh, narrative and things of, of that nature. Listen, man, Tennessee fans were done with Derek Dooley after year two. They wish they would have gotten rid of him. Florida fans were done with Jim McElwain after year two. They wish they would have got rid of Jim McElwain after two years. The fans at USC have been done with Clay Helton for the last two years, you know. But a lot of programs don't step up and do these things because it's it, there's not a precedence behind it. You want to give a guy time. Uh, you know, financial repercussions, yada, yada, yada. For Florida State, if, if again, if this thing happens, to take the bull by the horns, to step up in this manner financially and to put a plan in place and to and, and listen, I mean, if this thing gets finalized and they announce it next week, I still think timing-wise, it's it's amazing that you got it wrapped up in that fashion. Um, what a huge win for this, for this university that, again, for whatever reason has had some misinformation spread about its, its um, ability to, to build a winner because – uh, again, I mean, they're obviously totally financially invested in this whole thing, and I mean, they swung for the fences on this guy. Think about, you know, if, if, yeah. if you see Kirk Herbstreet tweet out what he tweeted out, uh, the guy from the Tulsa Daily tweets out. The, I mean, everybody has been like, Florida State, who do you think you are going after a guy like Bob Stoops? And it's like, uh, we think we're Florida State. You know, three national titles in the last 20-whatever years, and uh, best winning percentage, or, you know, top five winning percentage in the last whatever years, and how many Heisman Trophy winners? Three of them, and uh, yeah, they have they the won. most wins of any college football program since 1980. Yeah, sorry, sorry, we have That's this belief need. that we're really good. Sorry about that. I don't know, and have been for in every decade. Yeah, um, even I mean, 2000s, I guess, is the one uh, when they struggled, but they even played for the national championship in 2000, winning the Orange Bowl in 2003 and 2005. So it's all relative. 
but yeah, man, Florida State from 1980 has played it. I mean, they're, they've just been relevant in every decade. Again, this isn't official. If you're sorry, listening to this, sorry, that means sorry. we haven't re-recorded another show to say that it is official. So there's nothing official. But like Aslan said, the fact that you try to you, you take this huge swing, good for you, Florida State. Take a huge effing swing. Like, there's no shame in that. There's no shame in going after the guy that's the most uh, appealing candidate out there, that's the biggest name out there. You are Florida State. That's uh, what I like to say. Bob Stoops is commensurate with your status as a college football program. Boom shakalaka. Boom shakalaka. But, but I did want to say, uh, it, it, speaking of in the now, I did write a column about my man Odell. Yes. Um, we've talked about him a lot. Um, it's on war chant now. So if you get it, if you're in the car, go ahead and start reading that. Or if your kid's in the car with you, it'd be a good lesson for your kid. If he's like eight or nine, practice the reading, have him read the column to you or she have her read the column to you. But mainly the point is, is just, uh, and you'll hear with, with Dedrick Dodge. Cause we talked to him, Dedrick Dodge for the people that don't know, was a part of the 1985 class, um, was a three year starter at safety for Florida state on the, uh, the burgeoning of the dynasty, uh, obviously teammates with Dion and Sammy and Odell Hagens. And he talked about Odell Hagens and he talked about how authentic Odell is. And everything that you see in Odell now is the same thing you, he saw as a 19 year old. He, that's, that's the, what 19 year old Odell was like. Very serious, loves Florida state, completely genuine, a great teammate and a great leader. And that's what I kind of write. Not that it wasn't a, Hey, Odell needs to be the next head coach sort of thing. It was more like, man, has he not been the perfect antidote um, to what the, the illnesses of the last three years, because in 2017, man, that fan base was just, everybody was so they're just jilted and betrayed. And then this guy lifted everybody's spirits again. And then two years later, it's even in a, in my opinion, even in a darker place, because now you're talking about three years of losing. You fire the coach and nobody smiled around here and a four years since Dalvin was running wild. And all of a sudden this guy makes you feel good to be a Florida state fan again. He, rem I mean, again, I, I talked about it on headlines. I think I might talk about it here. Shanna, my ex-wife and Brady, my son are coming down to this game this weekend, Alabama state solely for the purpose to support Odell Higgins, not support him to be the next head coach, just show their appreciation to him because he's what this program was built on, man. Literally like the dynasty started with Odell Higgins in that class and that's kind of what that's what my column is about. Is just like he's always been a part of this university. He always has. He's a bedrock man. He he is the soul of this program because he's the one that was he was recruited by Bobby Bowden, played for Bobby Bowden, coached for Bobby Bowden, coached with Mickey Andrews, was recruited by Mickey Andrews. All those things that they told him 25, 30 years ago, it it's still in him. He's like the uh, as Dedrick Dodge called him. He's like the bridge. He is a bridge to the dynasty. He is a bridge to the great days of Florida State University. He is a bridge to what Florida State football used to be and could be again. And it's just, it's really cool that in these dark moments, two years out of three, that there's still been somebody like Odell Hagens to not just right the ship, but make everybody on the ship feel excited about the ship. Even in the short term, knowing this isn't a very good football program right now, he still instills pride in Florida state fans about their university and about their football program. I was, I'm That's sorry. I'm talking. Man. That was a lot. I'm no, sorry. I, uh, I was just thinking how awesome it would be if at halftime they did something where they're like, you know, please uh, pay attention to the jumbotron for a special announcement. And it was like a video of Odell um, just talking about how much he loves this university and how happy he is to, to be here. And, and he wants to stay here for as long as possible. And, and hopefully this guy will keep him around. And then it's like Bob Stoops walks into the shot. And is like, what's up, Tallahassee? Well, I'm Bob Stoops. I'm going to be your next head football coach. And the place just goes absolutely freaking nuts. And you see, like, Odell hug Bob Stoops on the screen. And then the whole place is just shaking. Do that. Florida State people, do that. Ooh. Do that for me. Can oh. you not do that one time, FSU administration? Make that happen. I wouldn't mind seeing Stoops parachute yeah. onto the field in the middle of the second quarter. Do the 15-minute halftime or whatever and just have Odell out there with a microphone and thank you. Like, hey, uh. Uh, you know, we got a special visitor that wants to drop by and then let one of those paratroopers bring in big game Bob and he's laying right there on the Seminole head. 
Um, <laughs> these are all free ideas. Use them as you would like, uh, folks at the Moore Center that uh, listen to the program. But, yeah, man, I can't wait to dive into that column because, again, there's just – there hasn't been a lot to really wrap your arms around and to feel really overly optimistic about with this program. But to your point, uh, just what Odell has meant to this this university for so long and you know, just the instant sort of, you know, gratification you get from him being on the sideline. You know, Kirk Herbstreet tweeted out his uh, five top performers from week 11. LSU, obviously, number one. Minnesota was number two. Illinois, I think, had some sort of crazy comeback win over Michigan State. They were three. Tulsa, four. Number five, he put Florida State on the list. Um yeah, you know, it's crazy. You know, again, people want to talk about them being biased, this guy being biased. Uh, you know, even the nation, even guys like Herb Street take notice of, of what Florida State looks like with Odell. Even Scott Van Pelt on his Monday night show after the Monday night football game was they, they did bad beats. And one of the bad beats was the over on the Boston College Florida State game because of all the all the what the 21 points that got scored in the last what was it? Two and a half two minutes. Two minutes. Of the game? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Three minutes. Yeah. Right. So two it, minutes. That's right. It was twenty-one points in two minutes. Yeah. So it, it helped. It helped your boy out over Corey in the over/under. Or uh, yeah, that was ridiculous. And it, and it was a bad beat. Like there was no reason that game should have hit the over. All things considered, um, but they they showed Odell as, as you know, it's a it's a very funny, laughable you know se- segment, and they showed Odell getting dunked with the Gatorade after or the Powerade. And even Scott Van Pelt, and Scott Van Pelt's like, man, they love Odell Higgins down in Tallahassee. They love that guy. He's awesome. Like even, you know, it, that's how much people recognize, you know, his importance to the program. And, and um, yeah, it's just it's college football still has a little bit of that romanticism left in it. I mean, it's yeah, not much. He's like the last vestige of it. Yeah. Um, not much, but but he is that because in another thing I wrote about, man, it's like 2019. All these coaches are mercenaries. They all are. And I don't I don't. Uh, Begrudge them that. Go make money. Go go try to climb the ladder. But he has been at the same school for, tw- I mean, if you go back to his playing days since 1985 with like a five-year gap to go play in the NFL. Um, since 1985, this is, it has been his school. And there is no doubt he could have gone other places. But this is his school. And he, I, d- I doubt it ever even occurred to him that he would go anywhere else. And that's just really cool to see, man, that he gets rewarded uh, for the longevity and for just number and also being really damn good at his job. Absolutely. It's it's not, you know, it's not like this is a charity, man. He he coaches he's coached some of the best defensive linemen of the last three decades. He's really good at his job. He coached Corey Simon and Marvin Wilson and everybody in between, man. He has seen it all. Um so yeah, he's part of the dang seminal rap. It's just it's it's really neat that he uh that he gets these moments. Because they do. They because even think of all the coaches that have come through here since Bowden left. None of those guys were real Florida State guys. Were they Dossy maybe? Yeah. Um, but, but, I mean, I, I would say Dugans, but Dugans stayed at Miami instead of coming home. Um, again, I don't, I don't begrudge him. I'm not saying that he should have. I'm not judging him. But all of these guys were just going where the paycheck was or where the next great opportunity was. Realistic makes perfect sense, but that's what it was. With Odell, it's never really been about that. It's always been about the school that came and recruited him out of Bartow, Florida, when he was 17, 18 years old, and Bobby Bounds sat there with his mom, made, you know, told him, told her what, you know, he was going to be like a father figure to him, and that's exactly what he ended up being. And Florida State just got up in his blood, and it stayed there. And he, he he's a Seminole man. He needs to retire a Seminole. Um, and it's just, it, it, it really does. I think it warms whether you're 75 years old or whether you're 21 years old. I think seeing Odell Hagens and what this program means to him just warms your soul because he's this program. He's the bridge to the, the dynasty. He's the bridge to Bobby Bowden. He's the bridge to the mid-80s. That's all wrapped up in Odell. And it's cool. No matter how this Bob Stoops thing play, plays out, it's cool that Odell has gotten to do this and be the face of the program uh, for whether it's a short period of time or a longer period of time, it's cool that Odell gets this chance again. And if he doesn't keep Odell around, I need somebody to let me borrow their truck so I can uh, throw him into the Chattahoochee River. You're, you're going to what? You're going to throw Bob Soups into the Chattahoochee River? Yeah, if he doesn't keep Odell on staff. Why do you need a truck? I don't know, to, to carry the bo- Actually, I got a, I got a little crossover SUV. I can probably fit Bob in the back in the trunk. <laughs> I was going to say you don't need a. I, I thought you were driving in the river with him. And obviously, folks, we don't conv- we don't condone murder of head coaches. No. But he would have some serious explaining to do yeah. if he didn't. If he did, and maybe that's the what the end result would have to be. Um, 
But yeah, I feel like the Florida State, like all the pushback that Stoops' camp might be getting, giving, like, okay, he needs this, he needs this, he needs to be the AD when he's done. Right. Uh, Mark Stoops is obviously going to come on board and be the coach in waiting. All these crazy outlandish demands they might be making, Florida State could be like, yep, okay, sure, yep, yep. Uh, and also he wants to bring in his uh, own D-line coach. And it'd be like a record scratching. Yeah. Wait, what? <laughs> what the blank did you just say to us right now? Excuse Are you serious right now? Get Venables on the phone. <laughs> And that's the end of the conversation. Odell stays, Bob. Odell stays, or you're gone. All right, man. Um, so, yeah, stay tuned. Uh, keep it on to warchant.com. Follow Corey on social media, myself. Actually, we're not going to tweet it. you got to go to warchant.com. Use the promo code FSU New Era, 50% off uh, an annual membership to warchant.com. If you're a student, email us from your student email address. Support warchant.com. You get the promo code for $12 for an entire year of content uh let's go ahead and play that interview with dedrick dodge aka the blade right after this it's wake up board champ presented by zaxby at birch orthodontics they know what a difference a beautiful and healthy smile can make in your life they take the time to get to know you and perform a thorough exam so that they can make an individualized treatment plan just for you or your child they use the latest technology in a warm and comfortable environment so whether you are interested in traditional metal or clear braces or clear aligners they can give you the smile you deserve they know investing in your smile means investing in your future and at birch orthodontics they are honored to be a part of your smile journey serving tallahassee for 16 years and supporting the knolls since forever Check them out at birchorthodontics.com. B-U-R-C-H orthodontics.com. Welcome on back. It's Wake Up Board Champ presented by Zaxby's. I'm Aslan. Corey's still here. And we got some greatness on the program. People want to hear from former players. So we figured let's get maybe one of the most charismatic ones that we possibly could. Dedrick Dodge joining us here on the program. Dedrick, how are you, man? Thanks for taking some time out today. I'm doing great. How you doing? Good, man. Hey, I, I know friends call you the Blade. We've just met, but can I, can I call you the Blade? Is that all right? Perfect. That's my name. Go oh. take Duffy gave it to me. That's what they call me. I'm the Blade. Okay. <laughs> how, how did that? What was the genesis of that nickname? What did you do on the field to earn the nickname the Blade? Hey, it was Coach McDuffie. When I first came to Florida State, I was real skinny, and they were trying to find a skinny nickname for me. Okay. And Coach McDuffie said I was so skinny I could hide behind a blade of grass. And then he said I used to come out and cut people like a blade. So it's a double-edged sword with the name. I was so skinny. I can hide behind the blade of grass. Also, when I came from out of there, I cut people. Man. And they just stuck. Everybody loved it, and they just laughed. They're like, yeah, he's the blade <laughs> to this day. That's a fantastic nickname. That's even a better story. Uh, uh, go ahead, Cole. I, I wanted to ask you, how how much did you weigh when you got to Florida State? And it wasn't was like you fit. were uh, – you weren't huge I when was, you left either. No, no, I was 6'3", 153. That's how much I weighed oh. when I stepped on the scale. I was 153 pounds. That's how much I weighed when I was Florida State. Uh, I was two by four, man. I was a two by four. That's what I was. <laughs> I mean, you hit. <laughs> you you weren't afraid of contact. Oh yeah, yeah. That's why I'm saying like a two by four. A two by four yeah. do some damage. You hit somebody with it. That was me. <laughs> I do some damage. <laughs> I guess, yeah. how much weight could you have put on if you were playing in this day and age where there's training table and there's nutritionists and all that sort of stuff? Was that was it a big deal for you to gain weight, or uh, did you just feel I, fine playing your natural sort of build? I felt I felt fine. Like, when I first got to Florida, I gained six pounds immediately. So I went from 153 to 159. <laughs> like, like, that, like, that's big. <laughs> um, but, but I was a football player, and so, like, I just knew how to use leverage. I can get to the ball. I was loud and I was physical, even though I was I was slim. And um, you know, it just worked for me. I mean, it's like Mert Hanks when I got to the NFL. Me and Mert weighed about the same. Mert wasn't no big guy, but he made all pro. So you know, a lot of times, it, you know, what I'm saying, it ain't the height of the weight or how strong you are. It's just if you can you can make plays. If you're a football player or an athlete, falls on that aspect. And uh, I, I was blessed with that type of instinct. Just a football player. That's all I was. So, Dedrick, you came in with Dion and, and Odell and Sammy. You were a part of that class, correct? Man, our class of 85, man, the closest class ever. No one is tighter than us. Foundation. T two questions. First off, what did you think of uh, Dion when you first saw him live and in person? Because you were, you were a big deal in high school, too. You're coming to Florida State. You're a very good player um, as well. But holy moly, this – and I'm sure you thought you were really, really fast – 
and then you saw that dude, and then also what were your initial impressions of Odell Hagens, and what kind of teammate was he? Deion, like when I came in, even though we had a lot of stars, Deion Sanders and Danny Smith was above. You, you can tell they were different. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Because Sammy Smith was a 100-meter, 200-meter runner. And then you had Dion with his team. Matter of fact, they raced each other. Like, the other first or second day, I mean, they raced each other. But you can tell that these guys were different. I mean, I, I need a work to do to be, like, on this level. Odell was always tough. I played against him in high school. And so Odell was always a leader, always very physical, um, no kidding around. Everything was business for Odell. He was ready to play from day one. Let's line up. And you was not going to out-physical Odell Hagan. You wasn't going to do it. He wasn't going to have it. And so Deion and Sammy, they just was elite. You can tell. Out of the guys, they, they was two of the elite players. And they separate themselves. But Odell was just, just hard-nosed, gritty, no nonsense, let's go to work. You know, he was them good playing for the Steelers or somebody like that. Lunch pail. Let's, let's go to work. And that's what he was. Who won the race? Did Sammy or Dion win the race? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, I think it might have been a tie. It might have <laughs> been a tie. It might have been a tie. Because <laughs> hey, Sammy had long long speed. Dion had short speed. Sammy had that long speed. You know, as a hundred meter. I thought Sammy was like 225, 230. I think D was weighing like, D, D probably came in 160. I came in like 153. So D was like 160. Yeah. Oh, but he, what, you know what he did too, though? He came in with the name Primetime. It was on his car. He came in with Primetime, and he brought confidence to us. He came in with the swag. As Miami had already had it, he bought it, bought it to Tallahassee. And uh, he's just a great teammate. All, all of us were. They just was a great teammate. Never thought he was bigger than nobody, man. It was Everything was about just doing things together and coming up together. Is there like a group text message that you guys are still on? Like, how do you guys all still stay in, uh, still stay in touch? Every now and again, like I'm telling you, I'm really close with Alfonso Williams, Odell Hagens, Keith Ross. He's real close with them. Alfonso Williams, uh, Odell Hagens, them two is really good friends now. Now Odell Hagens and then Alfonso Williams, Alley Cat. Yeah, them is them is them is guys right there, man. But he'll talk to all of us. You know what I mean? We all came in together, man. He's a great he's a great brother. He's a great brother, great teammate. He was at it in, in uh San Francisco. Um, everywhere he go, man, he you know what I mean, he, he brings guys together. Um, he's really about that family atmosphere and, and that's what Bobby that's what Bobby always preached and taught. You know what I mean? And that's why Odell's the same way. So it's safe to say that you're not surprised by the three and Odell record. Uh, I just, what are your feelings when you you watch this program from afar and you see the struggles, but you've been able to see a guy like Odell that you know so well uh, kind of help stabilize and, and and get things you know back to to what you're used to seeing when he's when he is the interim coach. This is the second time he's done it, and what he brings is just the genuineness. Like I said, he 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 knows the culture because he played in it. You know, what I mean, we learned from up under. Cletus Jones and Jamie Dukes and Hassan Jones, those guys, you know, it's, it's a no way. And every school has their way. You know what I mean? If it's USC, Nebraska, Penn State, you know what I mean? They had their way. Miami, you know, or Florida, they all got their way. It's a way that you got to act. And it's a seminal way. And we learned that. And it's passed on. And, so, and what Odell has that the other folks don't have is that he is Florida State. So he come up in it, was raised in it. And so he can easily bridge the gap to be able to share it with the younger guy. And so when they listen to him, they understand because he he played on this same grass, this ground that they're playing on right now. He ate in this same building. He's over 20 years, almost 30 years, bleeding, guarding in gold. So what he said, they can really feel it because he's that gentleman. There's no hustling over there. Like I told you, when he first came in as a freshman, there was no hustling in there. It was just blue collar. Where we line up at? Where we line, where my helmet? Where my pads? Are, and that's what he preaches. Family. Everything that Coach Bob and Coach Andrews, Coach McDuff, and all those great shows that we had. Mark Rick, man, we had a great staff. Brad Scott, all those guys, man, developed that in that family atmosphere, that culture, which helped build that tradition. Odell has never forgot that, and that's what he lives by. So he bleeds that, and he breathes that into the guys when he talks to them. That's why the D linemen are always good. That's his position. He breathed that. 
That's how Coach Amato did him, and now he passes it on. Dedrick, how did you how how did you get him to do the Seminole rap? Was he excited okay. about it? Did you write the lyrics yeah. for him? Was he excited about it, or was he like trepidatious, like man, I don't know if I can do this? Take me through that right. interaction when you got him to do it. It, it wasn't just me. It probably was okay. more Dion. I'm telling you, Dion, Dion and Odell are close. Dion, Odell, and Alfonso Williams, Abby Cat, they're really tight. Cause they, they was like roommates. They lived by each other, and uh, all they did was just, uh, you know, um, just vibe with each other. I think it was more Dion more than me, like you know, cause Dion was in it. Cause I don't think Odell wanted to do it, and it was somebody in I forgot what department. Everybody think I wrote it. No, it wasn't really me. Somebody came to me cause they knew I was an entertainer, and they wanted me to help, and so I basically helped. But it was another guy, I forget what department he was in, um, that, that came and, and facilitated the whole thing. And we just picked out people because Odell was one of the leaders. And we wanted some of the leader guys. I think it was Steve Gavin and Dave Robbins. You know, we asked a few guys. But because Dion was on there, I think Odell was like, okay. I think Dion might have convinced him more than anything. Like, come on, Odell. Come on, man. We got you, man. We, we'll take care of you. And he was just probably like, okay. And uh, <laughs> God bless his soul. He did the best he can do, man. And people still teasing about the Seminole rap to this day. But he take it all in stride. He take it all in stride. Dedrick, going back to your playing days, man, I've made this argument now for five or six years. If the college football playoff was around when you were playing college football, Man, I think it's at least two more national. I think it's two national titles. I think your 87 team was the best team in the country. I think the 89 team at the end of the season was the best team in the country. I think the 88 team at the end of the season yeah. might have been the best team in the country. Am I right or wrong? Yeah, you, you are right. Because at that time, we always kind of like peak late. Sometimes we would start out slow early. Um, but like I said, my that 87 year, you know, we you know it was the one point loss. Um, you know, we gave up a few big plays to, to, you know, a great Miami team, but we was right there with them. And then my senior year, we, we stumbled coming out the gate, but then we ran off. We ran off some wins. Like, this would have been hard for us in 89 because we had two losses. But if we were just like just had that one loss, we was good. That's why we was top five I mean, all them years in a row because we was as good as anybody. And so nobody really would have wanted to see us if we had gotten to the playoffs. I guarantee you that. They would have well, I know, to Florida State. I, I was going to say, I know, I know Nebraska didn't want to see you because that wasn't uh, fun for them having to play all twice in the Fiesta Bowl. That's right. To beat Auburn, beat Nebraska, beat LA. We were independent back then. You know, about to play anybody. What's up? We Florida State. We don't run from nobody. We play anybody. You want to play here? You want to play there? You want to play across the street? Okay, let's go play across the street. That's how Bobby was. And when he breathing to us, let's strap it up. Let's go play. And, you know, and, uh, and that's what we did. And that was our mentality. And, and and that's what Dell Odell, I call him Dale short. <laughs> what he breathing into the guys right now is no different. I know that's what he's telling them. It's what we was always taught. You know what I mean? Just no matter where we go. We're going to Boston College, we're going up there to win. We're going up there to attack. And where are we going next coming back over to Tallahassee, who we got? Okay, we're going to practice the same way. We're going to attack. This is the Florida State way. This is how you be a no. And who better to show no how to be a no than the authentic blue collar no? Oh, damn. Just move out. And I think, Dedrick, that's why he connects so much with the fan base. Uh, you know, I, be, I grew up a, a big Florida State fan, started coming to games in 1983. Um, and my ex-wife is a Florida State fan. I have a bunch of friends that are Florida State fans, obviously, because of what I do. And there's just a connection with Odell because he was there at the – I mean, he wasn't there at the beginning when Bobby got there, but he was there at the birth of the dynasty – with all of you guys, and then he's been a coach since the mid-1990s. I just think Florida State fans love the dude because of what he represents, right? He represents what Florida State is. He, he All he does is talk about how special Florida State is and what it means to him and what it's done for him. Not so much what Odell can do for Florida State, but what Florida State has done for Odell. Don't you think that's what, what connects with the fans is they know this guy has a genuine love for that university? humble, as humble as you can be, as appreciative as he can be. I would not be here. I'm the same way. I would not be here if it wasn't for Florida State, Nikki Andrews, Coach Bowden, and those great coaches that I have. That's why I talk the way I talk about my university, you know, my colors. You know what I mean? And that's the same thing with Oda. It's that blue-collar mentality. I mean, people 
a lot of people, a blue collar people, work hard for theirs, and they love to see when somebody just come from from humble beginnings to still remain humble. He could have been left. He could have left and been defensive coordinator at different places, went to other universities. He never. He stayed loyal to Florida State all these years because he was so appreciative. You know, and he, and he never wants Coach Bowden and Coach Ayers, none of us do. We never want them to forget on what they meant to us. You know what I mean? And the opportunity that they gave us. And so all we do right now is we just want to be able to give back. And that's, and, that, and that's what he protrudes every time he speaks, every time you see him. And you can't help but see it. You can't help but feel it. You know what I mean? From him, when he speaks, you're exactly right. And I got I got one more question for you, Dedrick, and it's about that class, the '85 class. Obviously, there's there were some big stars in it. And really, man, we know this. The people that that grew up on Florida State football realize that that that's the class. Now, the '93 class might have had more NFL guys. The '85 class is what started everything. Literally, started everything. The dynasty starts with your class, and it runs for 14 years. It's why it's why that stadium is so big right now. It's why all that money came into that university. It all started in 1985. How much pride do you guys take as a class? in what you did for Florida State football. I'm not going to say you put it on the map. Bobby Bowden already had it on the map. But you cl- you got it right up to the tippy top of the mountain. And how much pride do you guys take in that and what you did for this university? Now that we're looking at almost, what are we, 34 years later, it still has such a lasting impact on this university. It's, it's forever. And you can never, you know, this is saying that you can never be the first. And so when you're the first, number one recruiting class, and you bring in a Deion Sanders and a Sammy Smith and an Eric Hayes and a Kevin Grant and an Ed Clark and a, you know, a Scott Damari and, you know, an and Odell Hagens and, I mean, Shelton Thompson. I mean, all, all those guys, you, you bring those guys in, Pat Cumberland. And, and that's why you heard me say when you first, I first got on, I said, we are the closest class. We are. I don't think there's a class. I know disrespect to all the other classes. I don't think there's a class more closer than the 85 class, 85, 86 classes, you know, because we come up through Culver Terrace. You know what I mean? We came up through Burke when it was there. We, that's when we all lived together. That's all, we played right. for each other. I'll never forget that, that, that cut about Telvin Smith. I forget that ball game. They short sometimes on, on, on YouTube, and he was just like, play for each other. That's what we did. We played for each other. But just the pride of, like, being the first, being able to be there, because that 93 class don't come to Florida State the one for the 85 class, putting it where right. it was. You know, we struggled a little bit in the 86, and then it was rolling. But it was us to help recruit that 93 class. And like I talked about, right, building the bridge, okay, showing them how to be a no. So then we were shown how to be a no from Hassan Jones and Herb Gain and them, and then we end up showing the 86 class, who end up showing the 87 class, who end- then it got rolling. And that's what we're right. trying to build back. It's, 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 that's what they call tradition. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? This is the culture that we have. This is tradition. You know, and that was built from that class because it was the first, like, really superstar class, you know, with, with a guy, a Hall of Famer and, and NFL picks and Super Bowl winners. Well, Dedrick Dodge got two Super Bowl wins. Can you believe it? Dedrick Dodge, <laughs> 153 pounds, the blade. How he got two Super Bowl rings, and a high school state championship ring, and a World Bowl ring. How? I learned it at Florida State. I got it from there. My whole mentality was what I learned from Coach Bowden, Coach Andrews, Coach McDuffie, Coach Scott, Mark Rick, and all the Coach Amato, and all those coaches was there. Everything I do, I still take from Florida State. That's why I learned it at. I learned it from there. I'm appreciative to that. And I'm so appreciative to come in the class that I came in. Um, the class that I came in with Pat White and Michael Tanks. I mean, I can name them all as far as that. It's, it's a really special feeling. You know what I mean? That's why we always go back, and that's why we're so tight. Dedrick, is, you know, you talk about the, the, the respect that you have for Coach Andrews, Coach Bowden, and Coach McDuffie. Is it playing under those guys that has allowed so many of you to go on and coach, you know, in, in the next phase of your guys' lives? Yes. Yes, it is. Because I'm going to tell you now, and, and I can speak, well, McDuff and Andrews like the same people. Jeff, one just was on the offensive side of the ball, and one was on the defensive side of the ball. You don't get no more hard nose than those guys. And they will rip you up, ball you up, chew you out. But you know what? We knew they loved us. And everything that they did, you know what I mean, we know they did for us to be the best that we can be and represent the best that we can be. He, look, put it this way. They held you accountable. 
You know what I mean? Like, and nowadays, these millennials, they don't like to be held accountable. Look, McDuffie and, and Andrews and Amado and them, they held you accountable, which means that if you messed up, oh, it was repercussions, consequences and repercussions. It wasn't just, no, just pat on the back, oh, you're going to be all right. No, uh-uh. And so then when we all became coaches, we remember that. And so what y'all tell our players, the consequences, repercussions for everything that you do. You know what I mean? This is how we did it. I mean, it's still weird. You ain't got to, like, what they call it, like, reinvent the wheel. I mean, discipline, toughness, integrity, class, all oh, that's the same. In any corporation, in any business, in any athletics, you got to have that to be able to win. Family atmosphere, you know what I mean? That's still important. That's what we learned when we was up under those guys, and we appreciate it too. I know I am, and I know the rest of them are. That's why you that's why you don't do nothing but hear nothing but good things by Coach Andrews. Nothing. And to this day, we scared of Coach. I know I am scared of Coach Andrews. That he might make me do a hundred yard bear crawl right now if I ain't doing the right thing. Because he's gonna come to me and like, I know you know better, Dentry. <laughs> yes, sir. You know I, I know you right, Coach. Same thing with Coach Bowden. We don't want to. We don't want to embarrass Coach Bowden. Always said it's bigger. What you do affect more than just yourself. It's bigger than you. You represent the alumni, fans, everybody that's ever came through the garden and grown. It is bigger than you. What you do, you represent more than just yourself. What are you playing for? That's why I like what Selma said. We're playing for each other. We're playing for more. alumni, fans, everybody that's at these are colors. And that's what we preach. And that's what Odell gives back to them. When he speaks, that's what they hear. They hear that. They hear true, authentic, no artificial preservatives, Florida State guy. That's what they hear. Dedrick, these universities spend tens of thousands of dollars to these search committees to help them find coaches. Uh, can you give, you know, Georgia spent $42,000 for somebody to tell them to hire Kirby Smart. I think we probably all could have done that for free. Can you can you give Florida State's decision makers some free advice maybe? What it, what are the, the sort of the, the characteristics, the traits you think the next coach at, at Florida State University needs to have? Family-oriented as far as, like, Knowing what culture that we were built on in the tradition, you cannot overlook that. So I'm going to take Odell out the picture because we know he's all of the above. You got A, B, C, D, E, F, and you got all of the above. We, we know Odell is all of the above when it comes to that because he's Florida State. But say if it was somebody else. It has to be someone that's going to keep the family atmosphere together because that's what we were built on. It has to be someone who's a disciplinarian. It has to be someone that's going to hold coaches and players accountable when things are not going right. That's what Coach Bowden did. That's what Jimbo did. For real. You got to hold them accountable. But the family atmosphere is the whole thing. You got to invite, you know what I mean? That's what Dabble does so well. He reminds me of a young Coach Bowden, Dabble. He's a big family. They you know, to eat together with the basketball players. Everything was together. And God just worked harder. No one was bigger than the next man. No one was. It was like that when I was in San Fran. From the custodian to the to the to, to Eddie DeBarlo, everybody in San Francisco felt they were special. And everybody felt we was going to the Super Bowl. That's how Florida State used to be. And so whoever comes in there has to, has to nurture, enforce that culture and uphold that tradition. Because that's how them bricks got around that stadium right there. That's what we were built on. That's who we are. You know what I mean? When you talk about Florida State. So it has to be someone like that. That's going to embrace, going to embrace the tradition, enforce the culture, and, uh, you know what I'm saying, continue to nurture the family atmosphere that Coach Bowden and everybody else had, uh, had fostered. Dedrick Jodge, Florida State defensive back, great seven-year NFL veteran, joining us here on Wake Up War Chant. Thanks so much for your time, Dedrick. Really appreciate it, man. Appreciate you, brother. Go Nose. If you want an adventure, you could climb a mountain or ride dune buggies through the desert. Or you could just head to your neighborhood Zaxby's. Introducing the Smokehouse Cheddar Barbecue and Southwest Chipotle Filet Sandwich Meals. They're brand new and they'll take your taste buds to wild and exciting new places. Both feature our famous hand-breaded chicken and they're both available for a limited time. Only at your neighborhood Zaxby's. And don't miss Jumanji the next level, only in theaters.